Hi, today I'm going to show you how to paint Dark Angel Space Marines. The aim of this video is to help you get your Dark Angel Space Marines to a tabletop standard as quickly as possible. We're going to do this by just using contrast and base paints to get it to a tabletop level. Then for those of you who want to make it pop a bit more and stand out on the table, we will be adding some highlights with regular Sistel paints. So let's grab our paintbrushes and get started. As we're going to be using contrast paints, we want to prime our miniatures with a white primer. It's also worth noting that as contrast paints is so liquidy, it takes a little while to dry, so it's great to batch paint using this method, as by the time you have finished applying the contrast paint to your last model, the first one will be dry and ready for the next step. Unsurprisingly, for the majority of the model's armour, we are going to be using Dark Angel's Green. We want a good coverage over all the armour, so don't be afraid to get a bit messy with it. You can always clean up mistakes later with a touch of white. The great thing about contrast paints is that you don't necessarily need to use a wash over the top of it due to the way the paint behaves. It already does the job of seeking out recesses and enriching the colour. Once we have a good coverage with the green, we will then move on to using Blood Angels Red on all the red areas. This includes parts like the gun and the wax on any purity seals the model may have. Now onto the metallics, and for that we're going to use Lead Belcher. Make sure to give your pot a good shake. I have found metallic paints can get quite stiff in the pots, so it's important to loosen up that paint before using it. Apply the lead belcher to the rest of the gun, the vents on the backpack, any hidden belt buckles, and the tubing in the creases of the legs and arms. Some people like to paint these black, but for speed, I think lead belcher works just as nicely. One of the last coats to do is adding Balthazar Gold to the ornamentation of the gun and backpack, normally a skull or eagle, and the eagle on the chest. Annoyingly, I picked a bad example model as it only has gold on the gun and no eagle on its chest, instead it's got these weird silver straps. Lastly, we're going to add a coat of Rhinox Hide to all the leather areas, which is normally just the belt and any satchels attached to it. Now to add some super simple highlights. Don't worry, we aren't doing any edge highlighting or something tricky. We're going to go super simple with some dry brushing. We will do two separate layers. The first layer of dry brushing will be with Warp Stone Glow all over the green armor. Then a second dry brushing layer over what we just did in Moot Green, making sure it's a lighter coat and try to focus on the top areas of the armor to suggest the light is coming from above them. After these two simple highlights, I'd say this is a great place to stop with your model and get playing. But if you want to take it just a touch further, then keep watching and I shall boost this model up a level. And we shall start this by highlighting the red areas. For this, I'm going to apply Evil Sun Skull to the most upwards facing areas of red, like the top of the gun and the rim of the purity seals. Wash time! To add a bit more depth to those recesses, we're going to add a wash to the miniature. For all the metal areas like the gun, armour and backpack, we're going to use a black wash. I'm using Null Oil. Get a good covering, but try not to make it too heavy in any given area. The second wash is going to be Aglax Earthshade, or a brown wash. This is going to be applied to the levers and purity seal. The brown will tint the white paper on the seal to make it look nice and dirty. Whilst the washes are drying, it's a great time to apply your transfers as the surface is already wet. So if you're sticking some emblems on your angels, then now is a good time to do it. Now let's apply some more highlights to bring the colours back up after the wash and create higher contrast. Starting on the gun, I'm going to apply a second layer of Evil Sun Scarlet on a smaller area than I did before. I actually forgot to film an additional step you can take, which is applying a red paint, I use my fist on red, to the eyes. I look at this as being an add-on detail, as you are rarely going to see the miniature's eyes when you're playing on the table. You hold the miniatures about an arm's length away from your face. You're never going to see the eyes in play. You can highlight those eyes the same way as the rest of the red areas using Evil Sun Scarlet. To highlight the gold areas, we're going to mix our gold and silver paint in equal parts, then apply a very little amount to each golden piece of the model. 
To highlight the purity seal, I use a little bit of Ushakti bone on the raised areas and edges. To put those finishing touches on the armour, we are going to do some super scary edge highlighting. Nah, not really. Edge highlighting can be pretty simple if you choose the most pronounced edges. To do this, we want to apply some moot green to your brush. Pick a nice crisp edge near the top of the model that would definitely catch some light and run the side of the brush along that edge. This is the safest way to do edge highlighting by using the edge of the brush rather than a point. I'll leave that to the professionals. I normally only use this technique on a few areas to bring emphasis to them rather than all over the model. I usually just do the shoulder pads, helmet, backpack and by the feet. Now this could be it for your little dark angel, but I want to make sure he looks like he is part of a world. So here we go with a little bit of basing and battle damage. When it comes to infantry units, I like to keep their bases quick and simple, but effective. So what's the easiest way to do this? For me, it's texture paints. I'm going to cover this dude's base with some angle and earth, making sure to vary the thickness. Whilst this is wet, I might pop a little grass tuft on there too. Now this does take a few hours to dry, so whilst you're waiting, grab yourself a snack and watch The Witcher for the fourth time. If you want to add a little bit of chipped paint to those transfers you added earlier, you can do this by getting out some Caliban Green. This is effectively the non-contrast paint version of Dark Angel's Green. Use the Caliban Green to cut into the transfers as if the paint had chipped away in the battlefield. As you may notice, the transfer on the Marine's right shoulder is missing. This got stuck to my hand at some point and took me far too long to find once I realised it was missing. Now the last thing to complete your miniature can be done once the mud has dried, but if you're brave enough, you can do it whilst it's still wet. And that last step is to paint the rim of the base a nice black, or whatever your chosen colour is. Once you've done that, you can set your Dark Angel aside to dry, and it should be complete. So that's it. Now you know how to paint Dark Angel Space Marines in the way that I paint them. I recently did a video on how to paint Deathwing Terminators, which are uh, another unit within the Dark Angel's army. So if you want to watch that video, I will put a card here or something. I'm also thinking of doing a plasma coil painting tutorial, as I have quite a few Hell Blasters to paint up at the moment and they fit in with the Dark Angels series that I'm doing quite nicely as they're quite integral with the army itself. So if you'd like to see that, just let me know in the comments. I really appreciate your feedback. Whilst you're down in the comment area, you could like the video and possibly subscribe to see more content, but I'll leave that up to you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later.